So, you might have seen this tweet. Hungarian is a gender-neutral language. It has no gender pronouns, so Google Translate automatically chooses the gender for you. Here is how everyday sexism is consistently encoded in 2021. F you Google. On the left-hand side is a Hungarian sentence. Google Translate then translates this to the following text, saying she is beautiful, he is clever, he reads, she washes the dishes, he builds, she sues, he teaches, she cooks. So Google Translate chooses the gender pronoun and it appears to choose gender pronouns that are very consistent with common gender stereotypes. So this has generated a lot of outrage and the topic is coming up again and again and I thought we'd just dig a little bit into the background of why this happens and what we might do about it. So the first thing you might notice is the text here is really a bouquet of stereotypes and also ends with go to hell Google. So no doubt this person has tried a bunch of things. So I've kind of reproduced the first four sentences of the input and here it is. She is beautiful, he is clever, he reads, she washes the dishes. Now to detect whether or not this is a feature of the language, maybe there are subtle gender hints, here is a thing you can do. You can translate it back into the other direction, she is beautiful, he is clever, which will give you the Hungarian sentence. And then we can simply change the pronouns right here. He is beautiful, she is clever. If there are subtle language hints, you would expect that if you translate this to Hungarian and back, that the same sentence returns. However, if this is a truly gender neutral language, then you would not expect this to matter. So if we now translate this to Hungarian and then we take this Hungarian sentence and translate it back, oh see, it has actually switched around the pronouns back to she is beautiful, he is clever. So no doubt Google Translate here is inferring the pronoun from the words that follow, assigning beautiful to a more feminine pronoun, assigning clever to more masculine pronoun. These are gender stereotypes and we're going to dig a little bit into why this happens. For that, we have to understand how the machine learning systems currently work. Machine learning systems are statistical systems that try to translate a piece of text into a piece of text of a different language. So here we enter the piece of text in one language. It goes into this big ML box and out comes actually not a single sentence, but out comes usually a plethora of possible sentences along with probabilities assigned to each of those outputs. The system then chooses the most likely output and displays that to the user. I already said this is a statistical system. It is derived from a set of training data. So it's important to understand that all the system does is tell us that the sentence she is beautiful is the most likely sentence to appear in a document that is translated from Hungarian where this original sentence was present given the training data. The training data itself is of course derived from the world in some way if you believe that such a thing as reality exists. And there we have the whole system. So now we might ask ourselves what do we do about it? How should we fix this? And the answer unfortunately is it depends. It depends on where you think the problem lies. So the first point where there could be a problem is the way we derive the training data from the world or from reality itself. Common issues here are that the sampling of data is somehow skewed, it is out of date, we're working with old data. In general, the data that we have does not reflect the world. And if the data that we have is skewed in some way, we can only expect that our machine learning system picks up on that skew. So a person arguing this would say that it is actually not that likely that the sent Hungarian sentence here translates to she is beautiful, and it might be equally or more likely that it translates to something else if we only had 
all the translation data that we could hope of. The second point where we could introduce problems is when we derive the ML system from the training data. Here's the thing, every machine learning system introduces statistical biases in order for it to generalize properly. Otherwise, we could not do learning. And it's entirely possible that some of these things, such as the regularizer and the loss function, or the particular choice of architecture, would introduce statistical bias into the system. This would result in a model that does not reflect the data as we have it. So someone arguing for this would argue that even though we have good training data in the training data, there is no problem. The ML system derived from the training data introduces unwanted effects. So someone might argue even though the feminine version here is slightly bigger in the training data than the masculine version, through the process of learning and distilling, the ML model simply abstracts this and makes it a lot more likely, therefore skewing the gender balance unfairly. The last problem is the fact that we simply choose the top prediction and output that to the user. This is not really accurate. If we simply output whatever is most likely, this is an unfair representation. In fact, what we should do is we should give the user all the possibilities with all the probabilities associated. Someone arguing for this might say that the training data is fine, the ML model even makes good outputs, the probability distributions are correct and reflect the world. However, because we only pick the top one, the user is tricked into thinking that that is the only possibility, or maybe just that this possibility is much more likely than the alternatives. As good as that sounds to output always the probabilities associated with different ambiguous translations, the short answer of why we don't do this is pragmatics. I'll give you an example. This is Bilibili. It's a Chinese video sharing website and for people who cannot access YouTube from China, I do upload my videos to Bilibili so they can watch them. However, while I'm practicing Mandarin, I'm not good enough yet to navigate a site that is full of characters that I have even a difficult time parsing. And this is what Google Translate is usually used as. I just want to navigate effectively to the point where I can upload a video, define its categories, leave a description, and then send that off. If Google Translate were to give me every possible ambiguity of every translation, how could I possibly achieve my task? And this all breaks down if you just think one step beyond the things like gender. If there is ambiguity in a translation and you give me all the outputs, what am I supposed to know? I go to Google Translate because I don't know what something means. And especially if you don't give me actual probabilities together with the possibilities, I have no clue what to do. But let's go into this a little bit more. See, if we go to this original sentence and explore Google a little bit more, you might ask why is not even consistent across the entire thing I input. Google splits by sentences. It's pretty clear because once you hover over it, you get the different sentences right here. You can solve this by inputting a comma, in which case, at least within a sentence, the translation is consistent. This is not always the case, but it gives you a little bit of a hint on how Google Translate works. Moreover, if you just input a single word, Google will actually give you the output distribution over all the translations here. The second thing is if you input an entire sentence and it has a gender pronoun, Google actually gives you both versions and it says that translations are gender specific. It is only when you input more than one sentence that this doesn't work anymore. In fact, if I make this into one sentence, Google gives me both versions. And this is already the corner case because technically it should give me every combinatorical version of the different assignments of these four variables right here. So you can clearly see that Google is doing everything it can to give you a good practical solution that still makes sense in the majority of use cases. People use Google Translate because they want to get an idea 
of what something in a language means that they don't understand. They don't go to Google Translate to draft their formal letters that must be absolutely correct. So I think the accusation against Google here and saying things like F you Google, and honestly, Google has found a super pragmatic solution. And I think they're just doing the best they can in the face of the overwhelming complexity that is machine translation. All of that being said, there is a fourth category, a category of people that says that even if we derive the training data correctly and it reflects the world, even if our algorithm does not introduce any additional bias, even if the output probability distribution is the correct probability distribution for that translation, this is still not good because they see the problem here in reality itself. It is reality that doesn't conform to some preconceived notion. And this might have multiple reasons. For example, a person arguing this might argue that if we output the correct probability distribution, that might have some downstream effects or it might reinforce these stereotypes or a number of other arguments. Someone arguing like this would see ML models more as tools for social engineering, which is a valid stance to have, not criticizing that any of this pipeline is wrong, but that the original bias that exists in the world is carried over into these outputs. And we should change that in order to affect the world. Now, while that is a valid stance to have and certainly debatable, you have to ask yourself whether you really want to give Google a multi-billion, multinational corporation the almost monopolistic power to decide on what's good and bad for society. And personally, I'm gonna go no with this one. In any case, what I want you to take away from this is that there are many possible places where problems can be introduced and therefore many possible points where we can introduce solutions. But what we have to be careful of is that we don't confuse the different points and we don't let people provide evidence for one particular point of problem and then suggest a solution that is in an entirely different area. All right, that was it from me. I hope this was at least a little bit entertaining. 